If we knew what we were doing, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> we're going uh, to do a trial run at Mount Washington to check out, see whether this little car will climb it. And uh, basically it's a granite dynamometer. Mm -hmm. And the whole point is to stress it and see if it'll stand it. Mm -hmm. Because we've got to go 3,650 miles later on. When I was born in 1928, the world population was 2 billion. It's now 6 billion. The world population has tripled in just my lifetime. That amounts to 114,000 people added every day. Okay, in 1974, right over here in the fog, it wasn't foggy then, we had an electric motorcycle picture taken of the Corbin electric motorcycle, the first electric vehicle I think that ever climbed this mountain. And uh, I still own it. It's in, in the museum. What kind of thing does it have? A little four-cylinder engine? Or yeah, that? it's uh, about twice the size of a laptop. Yeah. It's aluminum. Four cylinder, 40 horsepower. Okay. And my car only weighs 800 pounds. All right. So 40 horsepower pushing 800 pounds goes like a rabbit. I see duct tape is an important part of it. Yeah. That, I think that's English duct tape too. This car is uh, leaving uh, August 30th for Oregon. We're driving the C2C. Okay. We have a website, c2c2003.org. All right. And the point of it is that someday we're going to run out of gas. And when we do, uh, it would have been nice if we had been less consumptive along the way. Too many people, too many people. Everybody's doing whatever they please. We got too many people and not enough dreams. Ultimately, the reason gasoline prices are going outside is that fossil fuels are getting shorter and shorter supply. You discount everything else. Ultimately, we're going to run out of gas. And there's, a, I think, a slim chance that it will happen so quickly that the kids who are presently in kindergarten may never have driver's licenses. I hope that doesn't happen that fast. I hope it stretches out for a long time. And one way to stretch it out is not to uh, run uh, 40 gallons worth of gasoline into an SUV and go 10 miles down the road and have to stop again. This car will go for a whole day, run it just as hard as you can run it. Back in primitive bygone ages, stars and planets and sun shone down on ferns and grasses, 40 feet high and herds of horrible thundering lizards. Then came a change in the long hunt. Season. One of the stars fell out of the sky And so what goes around comes back around And all of it ended up underneath the ground How strange it is And I don't even think about it How strange it is Speeding across the land This is our uh, lucky, lucky day. Everything we've touched today turns to not to gold. There was another king, King Anus, and everything that he touched turned to something else. I forget what it was. But a billion years is only a dream when you're stuck in traffic and the lights turn green. Living your life in a death machine, living in the age of gasoline. We're going to have an experimental license plate for developmental vehicles, but they insisted that we have a muffler on an electric car and seat belts on motorcycles, and uh, so we're going to have to debate this a little bit more.
got too many people and not enough truth. The starting point of your trip. Yes, it is. This is the Atlantic Ocean, or arm of it, and we hope to see the Pacific in about a week or so. Any projections on problems or delays or anything? Uh, we've had all of them, uh, had all of them just in one day today, so the future could be fine. Uh, we're going to stop and see some buffalo along the way, maybe. Good luck. Thank you. Charlie, how much he wants for air? 35. You got it. This car weighs 800 pounds and it'll carry 800 pounds of people. The uh, SUV, the Tin Pig, uh, weighs uh, about four tons and carries an 85 pound soccer mop. Next oil should be finished in 100 million 2004 AD, so don't go hanging around the gas station waiting for the next batch. We don't have the family farm anymore. We have agribusiness, and that means giant diesel tractors, it means growing food in the Midwest, 1,700 miles from where you have your dining room table. 
means trucking it here in 3.6 million trucks, burning a lot of diesel fuel. goes 60 miles on a gallon of gas. We know that. And the claim is that if it was in good shape, if it didn't have 81,000 miles on it, it would do better than it's doing. And they say 70 miles per gallon is common, and some people are capable of getting 100 miles per gallon. Last Saturday, a group of three vehicles left the state of Maine, aimed at ending up in Oregon. It's a modern trip to commemorate the first transcontinental trip by car 100 years ago. They uh, made it in, in fairly decent time. Uh, lots of weights at railroad depots for repair parts. Their car was a four and a half horsepower curved dash Oldsmobile. MacArthur says now, after a century has passed, a similar trip across the country is very different. Now as they make the trip a hundred years later, they're less worried about actually getting to the other end of the nation, and more worried about how much gas they're using to do it. MacArthur says as he watches the gas prices climb, the United States needs to become less dependent on gasoline and oil. So the group is making the trip in very gas-friendly cars. MacArthur is driving a three-wheeled British car that gets 60 miles to a gallon of gas. Jim Bentley is also on the trip, and he is doing even better than MacArthur. But I did manage to sneak one day so far that was over 90 miles per gallon. So that was a real good one. Uh, this morning after... Uh, leaving just before Waterloo there. Uh, so far today I'm doing just a tad over 80 miles per gallon with this. Bentley says they don't know when they'll get to Oregon, but he does add the only thing that matters now is just that they get there. In Hanlontown, Justin Foss, KIMT News Channel 3. Bells are jingling, ancient magic. Fires are signaling up ahead. We are traveling on the backs of cats and buffaloes back to the Speed's unreal and that country's poisoning every stream when all of the was wrong gasoline house. What are we looking at? Well, the sign here says dead end, but I don't think it is. I think it's the beginning in a lot of ways. Behind us, a lot of uh, wind generators. I don't feel much in the way of breeze, but look at the way they turn. Really. Generating electricity here out in the middle of Iowa. I don't know how many there are, uh, how, how far they go. Uh, they seem to go on for some distance. Way, way off, little tiny ones, with, uh, really the same size as the ones in the foreground. Sustainable and renewable. That's what we need more of. Charlie, tell me about ethanol. What do you know about that? Uh, corn, derived, and this is corn country. Uh, ethanol uh, it replaces MBTE or whatever that, that additive is. It's probably less noxious than anything else. It takes, uh, they say, about 1.6 gallons of diesel fuel to make a gallon of it, ethanol. So, energy-wise, it's probably a loser. But there's some political 